and the personality structure kind of shifted from being the centre of the show to being another element in the show. And it took me a long time to kind of, on the intellectual thinking level, to be able to kind of phrase this in words because it doesn't come with a manual. But the personality structure still updates. Like I can still sometimes have a tendency to think I'm wrong, like I've got something wrong or done something wrong, like that conditioning on the personality structure level. We assume that other people are right and that I don't know what's happening. Um, to let other people take the lead, to not have great boundaries. And all these things though are getting updated and become more and more clear and understood better and sort of ironed out more. But they're still there and I, I sometimes feel that, well I have, well, like the, you'll always have an imprint of that old personality. Like there's got to be a personality structure in this body. Like there's always going to be certain neural pathways in this body, and you can update them to an extent. So we can always update them by learning, understanding, bringing to consciousness our our dynamics, and then consciously choosing to choose a different dynamic. It can change it, but there's always this imprint of this personality. And that's taken me a long time to kind of come to a way to speak about that because it's so tightly connected, the ironing out of the conditioning like, and the waking up because in one way when you wake up you do become more and more balanced on the human level. And you kind of fall in love with yourself more and more on the human level. And that kind of carries on after that shift. But that's hard to kind of talk about because they're so interconnected. Um, but the most important part to talking about the human level is not expecting that you're going to be a perfect human. Like not waiting to not have neurosis or fears or jealousies or guilt or embarrassment. Like not waiting to become this perfect human god. Like if you think about it logically, it's like the ultimate ego delusion to wait to become this perfect walking god. And I've thought a lot, like as a speaker, why other speakers and teachers imply that you do become some walking god. And then there's a lot of teachers that don't imply that. They say that enlightenment is about the exception of all the imperfections in the human character. And so I've thought a lot about why there's such a big difference. And this is my latest up-to-date theory about why there's so many differences in the way it could be that people like me and other speakers haven't got to this perfect human godlike state. And we are prematurely ejaculating, like prematurely talking, like if we wait another decade or two decades, we'll get to this perfect, godly, human place where all conditioning is only positive. But that doesn't feel right to me. could be that, I'm open to that, but it 
just doesn't feel right. Because when I look at Khaleesi, and I know Khaleesi's free, I know it. I know that she could never ever identify. So I know that she's the ultimate level of freedom. Or the ultimate. Because she can't identify, she could never identify. And I know you think that's debatable, but there is no doubt in my mind there. Khaleesi has all types of personality quirks. She displays guilt. She displays embarrassment. She displays fear. She displays joy. She displays excitement. She displays sadness. She displays sneakiness. She displays anger. She displays a lot of joy. I call her the external joy. And I've known her since she was a young puppy and I've seen her become conditioned. So I know her, her, her natural way of being and I've seen her become conditioned and even and a lot of her actions now that I see and her behaviours is because I've had that joy of spending so much time with her. I can see how she's developed that in certain situations. So if somebody raises a stick to her quickly I know that reminds her of a gardener in Thailand and she cowers in fear. Like, um, when she's aggressive towards a dog, I know that's because when she first came into Europe, we had a bumpy landing trying to domesticate her. I didn't manage to secure us a home very easily with a garden. And so sometimes when we went out walking, I didn't have a garden, so she had lots of energy. She came across a lot, another dog with too much energy, and then she wasn't allowed to speak with that dog. She was pulled back by the lead and the collar, and this created a sense of agitation, so bit by bit she became more aggressive to other dogs on the lead. She's not that bad now because then we worked against it, but I saw all these conditionings, like this tendencies, these behaviours, like where she picked them up. When we live with my mum's dog, she picked up from my mum's dog obsession with squirrels, chasing squirrels, and like looking up trees, squirrels. So... She displays all qualities of perfection and imperfection. And I know she's totally free. I recognize that freedom because I have that freedom, that innocence, that empty looking, that alive presence. And like her, I have a bumpy personality. I have particular conditioning. And I strive to recondition it and grow and expand on the human level, whereas she can't really. I tried to help to recondition her. Um, we work together as a reconditioning. <laughs>